do I even need to say it? You know, the titles should have given you enough of an idea about what's going to go on. A-R-M-S. A particularly fun lift for multiple reasons. For one thing, it's a little bit easy on your overall system. You know, I'm, I, uh, maybe I'm just a wuss, but I, I never really feel like I'm going to pass out or throw up during an arm day, nor do I think I'd have an easy time doing that. And it is one of the more, let's just say, jarring pumps that one can get, you know, that one lifter can achieve. Is, I'd say, least impressive pump? Probably hamstrings, you know? When my hamstrings are pumped up, they're really not that much crazier looking. Because they're kind of a funky muscle. They're sort of surrounded by the quads. They're kind of just, like, snuck in there. Like, don't get me wrong, they're bigger and I enjoy it. But in terms of, like, freak factor, you're not going to walk around with it with shorts on and have people turn their heads and say, holy shit. Do you, you see that guy's hamstrings? Unless you're a total fucking freak with, with hamstrings, which not necessarily something I see a lot. But arms, arms are right out in the open, man. And a big set of arms is just fucking cool. And I don't even necessarily mean big. Because look, when I think of um, how I'm progressing body-wise, yeah, I am growing, of course. But bigger, and this, even me saying this right now sounds kind of crazy to me, but bigger is not always better. I'll see dudes who are fucking still 180 pounds, but they've got specifically big arms like, like red-haired Rocco. You know, you know who I'm talking about. I mean, the dude's like 180. One, not, yeah, I don't think he's 190 either. But his arms are fucking huge. Big ass fucking everything. Fuck, man, look at that guy. You know, so, as cool as size is, it is also kind of all about just proportionality. And if somebody's super lean, you don't even have to be crazy huge to just be fucking like veins and striations all over the place. But really, why am I even explaining this? Obviously... A big set of arms are just fucking cool. And when you get an arm pump, that's your peak into the future, you know? You just time traveled, uh, potentially even a fucking year into the future of gains, and you're seeing your arms an extra half inch or an extra three quarters inch bigger than they are normally. And only in the time period of about fucking 30, 45 minutes. Okay, for 30 would probably be pretty short for a full arm day out. More like 45. So, it's just fun. Just fun. I I like to think that I don't like... When people ask me what's my favorite lift, I like to think, like, oh, well, I like them all equally. Because if you're a real thoroughbred lifter and you've got that itch in you to fucking get huge, then you kind of appreciate every muscle on your frame. To the point where you want them all to grow in proportionality, Arnold style, like make sure everything's the right size. But fuck that, arms are up there. An arm pump is pretty sweet. Chest is probably same level in my mind as arms. And then I think everything else kind of just is one tier lower. Now I still go hard on every lift. And if you're the type of person to you know maybe slack off on body parts or at the worst skip body parts purely because you're like, Oh, well, you know, I'd, I don't really like legs. Oh dude, I hate, I hate shoulder day, man. I hate doing back, you know, chest, arms, chest and arms, kind of a classic fucking bro lifter move. No, no, man, come on. It's, uh, I can tell you what to do. In terms of leg workouts, you'd be a lot cooler if you did them. You'd be a lot cooler if you did calves. And me saying that kind of makes me feel like an asshole. I haven't done calves in like 
a month. They're not super small though, so I'm not like insanely concerned. But fuck. I don't the gym closes in an hour once I get in there. I don't think I'm gonna add calves in today. I'll do them I'll do them when I'm doing. If your calves are real small, then you need to be a little bit more diligent. But if they're big enough to the point where you got a set of them. Man, uh, what am I what am I talking about? I'm just coping. No. Hit hit calves. Uh, me too. I'm not I'm not saying that just for you. I gotta get on my game also. But one hour of arms. Really more like forty five minutes. That's about right, you know. I can do workouts where I'm a little bit quicker, where you know I don't take too long sitting around and uh, just huffing and puffing and breathing between sets. And I mean, there's kind of benefits in either case. When I'm dieted down, like right now, like I'm, a, I'm in a much leaner state. I'm not so full of food and. I don't know if you know this or not, but when you bulk up and you're doing a proper bulk and you're really you're really pushing food wise, you are just a little bit more generally inflamed. Uh, one little side note about that for me is my uh, my skin looks much better, especially in the face because my my I used to have crazy acne all over the place. You gotta look at uh, look at the old TikToks. It's pretty wild for a while. Uh, not a recommendation. But if you're curious about how that disappeared, it was Accutane under doctor supervision, of course. But, uh, but yeah, so whenever I'm dieted down, I don't have so much fucking just internal pressure in my gut from digested food and everything else. So I'm kind of just a little bit more of a fucking efficient machine when it comes to just moving around and exercising. And that's, you know, that's a no-brainer. If you took someone fully bulked versus someone fully cut, or even on the process of getting cut, which one do you think is going to have better cardio? Which one do you think is going to be able to catch his breath faster? So whenever I'm dieted down, my workouts do take on a little bit of a faster pace because each set that I do isn't necessarily so like damaging. When I'm bulked up and I do a set of biceps, my, my biceps are wrecked for a minute. They need some time to kind of build back up. Whereas now, you know, I'm a little bit weaker. I don't have so much sugar water powering my muscles up. So they give out a little bit quicker without having done so much damage. So you know, only after a minute or so of jamming out to uh, motionless and white and bring me the horizon, I'm ready to hit another one. So... In terms of your rest periods, this is kind of a pretty, not even kind of, this is a very frequently asked question. Uh, it's kind of just until you f you're fucking ready to hit that set again, which I know is like so basic, but there's no point waiting an extra three minutes if you feel ready at one minute. And you're definitely not going to be able to do a set with the same reps-ish or intensity if you only wait like 30 seconds and then try to hit it again. I mean, if you got a stopwatch every set and you're, you're, you're floating around the 30 second mark between sets, uh, I think you might be going a little too quick. But if you go until you've caught, caught your breath, you feel ready to go again, you know, you know you'll be able to do that same weight or similar for at least a similar size set, then I think you're pretty much good. So let's let's not waste any more time. And cut to I know it's triceps, but I'm not sure exactly what the first movement will be. But let's uh let's find out. Two long D handles overhand. Perfect starter. I'm gonna do it in back and forth style for your arms. So after this set of pushdowns, I'm gonna do a set of curls. And then go back and forth one set after the other. Triceps, biceps, triceps, biceps. Until I'm totally pumped up. And then that'll be it.
Probably come back to this, but let's get started with curls. I think let's repeat the same two sets. Those push downs and this curl again. And then put something else. Good start though. Nothing too heavy yet. Action never hurt anybody. Okay. All right, back to curls. I'll be a little nastier with this set, not so smooth and controlled, still within reason. But as much as I like the feeling of the squeeze and the burn, I'm doing a slow, controlled set. Moving the weight around a little bit quicker too. At least for me, it does let me get a better pump. So I'm not saying it's better in general, but I do like at least a relatively even mix of both. Okay. Okay. Dumbbell curls and machine dips next. Uh, whoops. That's how the sack. So next is perfect. Six C's out of a guild. Mm. 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 
Oh, fine. One more set of you know, that duo. Out of all the movements that I do for arms today, this is the one which probably takes the most, well, thought, because I'm trying my damnedest not to push with my chest at all and only extend my triceps to move the weight. And it gets harder the closer you get to failure because oh, I can't push the weight. I got to recruit more muscles to move it. And then you're going to start working your chest. Come on. And that's something you'll just get better at with time. I mean, being able to like individually contract muscles and relax others, fucking, it's just part of the game. But another slightly heavier for the dumbbell curls. We're well on our way to having a good arm day, Don. I feel like there's a rep range or more like a weight range where it's an effective weight. If you go too heavy and you only do three reps, not even like a chance of getting four, like that's way too much. But if you do a set where you get into like fucking just, I don't know. I feel like with light enough weight, I almost just feel exhausted rather than like worked. So I kind of want to stay right in a weight where by the time I get to 10 reps, failure is imminent. And I think the 75s will help me do that right after I pick a better saw. Time for some cross body extensions. This sort of goes against my whole previous speech where I was like, use a heavy enough weight to fail at 10. But with a squeezing burnout set like that, a little bit of a different scenario. So again, it's like there's, apart from training hard, calories in, calories out, staying hydrated in your sleep, I wouldn't say there are too many 100% all the time cut and dry rules to this shit. 
as long as you go hard and get a pump, I think you're well on your way to some gains. Make some standing easy bar curls. We'll do the trick. I would do preachers, but I kind of always do preachers. I want to change it up. And also, I kind of want to do some cheek curls. Like reasonable form in the beginning, of course. This isn't so heavy where I have to swing the first few reps. But once I get fatigued a little bit, I think there's some fucking serious benefit to using a little body language towards the end of a set. Throw it up, then you get to ride the negative down. I wouldn't say that's something you should do style-wise for all your reps, of course. But as an intensifier, I'm fine with it. You know, I think one more of the triceps and then I'll probably do this into a set of easy bar preachers. That might be it. Reasonably low volume arm day. But I feel fucking fatigued and pumped to hell. Actually, we'll just do preachers. No superset. And arms are done. All right, so given this is the last set, I have absolutely no reason to leave anything in the tank. And I never have that mentality except for when I'm warming up. The only time you'll catch me do a set where I'm not really trying to push it is if I'm just getting exposed to the weight, you know? But in your actual workout, if even half of your sets are kind of fluffy, like if I can do, let's say I could get 20 reps with this. I don't think I can, but it's hypothetical. And I, if I really push it, I can get 20. If I stop at 10, that's a shit set. If I stop at 15, it might be a little better, but still on the lower end, you know? If you can have two extremes, one where you don't push yourself at all, and one where you push yourself as hard as you can go on your sets, which side do you think you should gravitate towards if you want your training to actually do something for you, you know? And I'm not saying every set, and I've said this before, I think you guys, everyone knows this, every set doesn't have to be like a fucking maxed out screaming, just, you know, insane event. But if you're physically capable of getting 20 reps, I say the closer that you can get to that 20 on that set, the better. It just makes fucking sense, man. The only argument against it is if you're fucking training like a wuss. <laughs> And that's the end of it. Kind of a chiller arm day. I didn't do anything too heavy. But. Oh, there's no butt. Let's pose down. Okay, only six sets for tries and buys. That's kind of the lower end of the volume that I'd be satisfied with. But still within range, you know. If you told me you did a one set arm day, or you only did one set of pushdowns, and one set of 
curls. For one thing, I would say, oh my God, Mike Mentzer, it's so nice to meet you. But I think that's pushing it a little too low. I think it takes more than that for sure. But if you told me you did a 20 set arm day, or you did 20 sets of pushdowns and 20 sets of curls, I would probably say that that's a little bit on the higher end, you know, but somewhere in the middle, I think if you're floating around six to 12, and I know that's still a wide fucking number. That's like one workout could be twice as many sets as the other one. But around there, as long as you're fatigued and you're pumped, I think you're good, you know? And whether you do 12 sets or five sets or 10 sets or eight or whatever, or you do a lot of supersets or you do all straight sets, again, if you just do your sets fucking hard and you yourself know in your heart that you pushed it, you're probably going to grow. So even if you have the, like, just hypothetically, there is a perfect answer. On any given day, there is probably like a quote-unquote perfect amount of volume and intensity for you to maximize your muscle stimulus for whatever lift you're doing. But nobody knows what that is exactly. We're getting close. Like the fucking exercise science about muscle growth is kind of condensing. We're getting a bit smarter over time. But a lot of the basic shit has already been discovered, man. I mean, tons of old sort of bro science bodybuilder lingo has just ended up to be proven to be legit. You know, because you got to think, if there's thousands, actually fucking hundreds of thousands, millions of meatheads all trying whatever they can, you know, muster up in their minds to grow muscle, what works is going to be talked about more than what doesn't. So I don't think it really needs a perfect scientific explanation. If you flip a light switch and the lights turn on, you don't need to know that there's wires connecting them, right? If it works, it works. But you know, train hard. That's all I'm saying. So let's see how we look. I will admit I do feel a little bit on the less than perfectly hydrated side of things because this morning I spent like 20 minutes in this, or no, like 25 minutes in the sauna because it was like, it just wasn't that hot today. So I was kind of in there for a little longer than normal. And I think I didn't increase my water intake to reflect that. But oh my goodness. I, I, you know, I got to stop saying, oh my goodness. When I rewatch these videos, when I edit them, I feel like I say that 50 times in a row. It's, it's irking me. But that's a pair of arms for sure. Boy. Oh, yeah. I mean, who could be dissatisfied with this, you know? It's like it's not even perfect. This is a good one, too. I'm getting a little bit spoiled from being leaner because with the shirt on towards the end of that workout, just by feeling, I honestly didn't feel insanely pumped. Because when I'm bulked up, I mean, my arms are fucking so inflated to the point where I can't even really bend them this much. Like, my arm's range of motion literally gets fucking cut down because my forearm is, like, running into my bicep and everything else. But, jeez. Don't make it sound like I'm complaining. Yeesh. Oh, my gosh. I feel like such a diva whenever I get leaner because I always spend a bit more time posing when I'm fully bulked and if you've watched these long enough you know I probably do a lat spread double by maybe a maybe a little side chest action like I just hit a couple and then I leave but when I'm extra lean I mean it's just fucking well, it's just extra cool, you know? Like, come on. Oh, jeez. And look, I'm nowhere near Marcus Rule or Kevin Lavroni. But when you know that you're looking bigger or cooler or vanier, regardless of your fucking size, 
it's just fucking fun. But all right, let's uh, they're about to close. Let's get out. Okay. Arms done. Eh, not my craziest pump, but that doesn't really concern me too much. I'm not super upset. Uh, and this is kind of another reason why I feel I don't know, as though I'm kind of pausing my progress in a way when I'm dieting down. And it's because it doesn't require as much. I mean, I also, I literally just can't go as hard when I'm dieted down. I'm physically, and I, I know it's, I, just, I don't mean weak, but relative to like my peak strength, you know, I'm physically weaker when I am, you know, dieted down in a deficit because muscle gain, strength gain, it's simply not the goal. You know, when you're dieting down, the most important thing is just maintaining a calorie deficit for a long enough period to lose the amount of fat that whatever your goal is. So, in a sense, it's almost like I'm on a muscle building hiatus. Uh, because dieting down, the whole point of the workouts at all, apart from the fact that I like doing them, is muscle maintenance. Because if I were to stop working out altogether and eat in a calorie deficit, sure, I'm going to get leaner, but I'm also going to shrink down muscularly. Like, oh my goodness, I don't even know. Considerably. You know, being big and huge, it is an active activity. So, or no, no, it's, a, it's an active state of being. You know, use it or lose it, as it were. But that also sort of means that the lifts themselves don't need to be so insane of a stimulus as they would, or at least as I would want them to be when I'm bulking up. My main goal is have a good lift, don't hurt myself, get pumped, and come back and do it again the next day. So in terms of, in terms of the weight, in terms of the weight, this is controversial. You know, Sam, You've got professionals, you've got certified professionals telling you, don't lift so heavy. Why don't you fucking listen? And look, man, I do. I do listen. Uh, I definitely feel as though I try to put myself in a position to um, take a back seat in a sense whenever I get to lift with some of these really big dudes. Let them lead and kind of follow. Sort of, you know, see how they go about it. And not even, you know, some of the guys who I've gotten to lift with who are just really big and fucking huge. I mean, even just anybody. Sometimes if I'm not totally sure what I want to do in terms of the next style of set or movement, or if the gym is just kind of packed, I'm going to just go up to somebody and ask them, like, hey, what kind of bicep set do you think I should do right now? You know, a heavy one or a light one, a squeezing one? You know? Like, I remember I was doing buys, and I, I, like, the preacher was taken, all the cables were taken. And I go up to this one dude, he, uh, if he's watching this, he would remember. And I was like, you got any, got any bicep curl recommendations? And he says, you do spite, have you done spider curls for a little while? And I said, no, light squeezing set spider curls. Perfect. So it's not like part of this is also my own progress cause and effect bias, which I have always said everybody pretty much has. You know, if you work out in a specific style, or if you are if you're a CrossFitter dude, or if you are like a calisthenics guy, or if you're a straight up bodybuilder, or whatever, however you work out and what has given you results, in your mind it is gonna kind of fucking form a little bit of a locked mentality where you're going to say, like, okay, this has worked for me in the past, so I'm probably inclined to believe that it's going to continue to work. And that's everybody. But I think the fact that that's the case is really just confirmation that whatever you fucking do is going to work, you know? When I'm talking to, like, when I get to go to the, like, to the, to the D Detroit Pro and fucking, like, the Arnold, these real hubs of, like, 
absolute freaks. It's uh, it's impossible for me not to talk to these guys about their training styles. And I hear it in every different fucking way imaginable. You know? Fucking three rest days a week. No rest days a week. Somebody like Hollingshead. Dude's fucking... If you think I'm kind of strong, look up James Hollingshead. Absolute freak. You know, and even getting into a little more historical characters, we've got more of a... You know... We'll hear Jay Cutler talk about his 20 set workouts that he was doing. And, you know, I'll hear some, like, Kevin Lavroni interviews. Like, you know, the stronger I am, like, you know, heavy weights, that's what really does it for me. And, like, and a lot of the justification is kind of bro science you know? Like, it's really just whatever fucking works. So I will admit, and not even admit, but, like, I know this. Whenever I lift to the point where... I hurt myself or pull something or tweak something that is that is wrong that is stupid I am really trying my best to chill on sets where I'm pushing myself beyond the limit of safety but I at least for me man I mean that's where I make my results that's what I, I mean when I'm when I'm big and strong I'm big and strong you know I'm doing actual weights uh, the stimulus of muscular tension is something that I do bias for at least a few of my sets. And what I mean by that is for me to go into, go into a chest day and to just do moderately light sets for the whole lift or like, you know, bench the, bench the one twenties pound dumbbells for incline and try to like squeeze it on top. It just doesn't, it doesn't connect with me, man. And I would be inclined to believe that I think I've got a decent ability to fucking flex my muscles, you know? Like, just from doing it this long, I kind of know what does the damage to whatever muscle I'm training. And this is one point which I think is something I didn't really plan for, is whenever I make these videos and I'm talking about how I'm working out, uh, I often kind of splice between you know saying what has worked for me and what I think would work for you know the general populace of lifters because I'd like to think that I say at least a couple of good tips but you know it does kind of they do kind of blend together you know so don't uh don't get to um don't get turned out of sh bent out of shape. The only routine that I want you to do, and the only rep schemes and weight styles and you know number of heavy sets versus lighter sets, the only kind of routine I want you to do is the one which lets you go the hardest, the most consistently, lets you progress over time, and if your goal is fucking muscle growth, then you've got to grow. So if you're doing a routine and you're not growing, something's wrong. Something in your equation is wrong. Because if you're not making any progress for even months at a time, like even if you can tell that you haven't really changed at all now from three months ago, then all that means is that all the work that you've put into the gym and working out or maybe you started tracking your diet too and making sure you get good sleep and staying hydrated, all the work that you're doing is only enough to maintain your current state. So eventually, maintenance is just inevitable. You know, gains are a diminishing return kind of situation. But even towards the higher end of years into, into lifting, you should still be able to make tangible progress in certain aspects of your fucking build. So you got to do whatever fucking works. And getting back to you know, the weights... For me to push a really heavy set and just have a ton of tension on whatever muscle I'm training, at least for a few sets in the workout, I've got hundreds of lifts to back up the fact that it gives me a crazy pump. I feel nice and fatigued, and when I go home and you know eat my bulking diet, I grow. But you are right. You are right. Whenever I go so heavy that I pull something, that is that is fucking stupid. That's my inner ego lifter fucking coming out. 
So if this is the bar, if right here is the bar where uh, on any given day exceeding this weight is too much, of course I never want to go above it, right? For me to go into a workout and pull something, it's, it's, ex it's completely counterintuitive. It's fucking stupid. But I do want to get close. Pushing the envelope is kind of just how I like at least a few of the heavy sets. Because if you don't push it to a point that you've never been to, then you always want kind of a newer stimulus. And it's just the nature of your fucking muscles, you know? Of course, there is a diminishing return. I'm never going to need to bench. Honestly, even like 365 is probably the most that I would ever need to go up go up to. Uh, but there's just uh, the big muscle is a strong muscle, man. So if I want to get bigger, I do see that improving my strength with heavier sets is going to work. But then... If, if those are two really good heavy sets at the beginning of the workout, like look at the last chest day. Two heavy-ass sets of incline dumbbell. And those were that was the heavy set. The rest of the workout was much lighter squeezing sets. You know, pec decks and... Um, well, I guess I did one more heavy set of Smith Machine Press, but that was a little bit later on. So, combine some heavy sets. Ran eight reps, ten reps to failure with... Some lighter squeezing sets. Today, for arms, much more on the lighter squeezing side. And as kind of plain... Or not... What's the word I'm thinking of here? As, uh, as simple and sort of shallow as it sounds, as long as you have a good workout, regardless of style, I think it's going to fucking stimulate your muscles. And the only thing that's going to stop you from growth is just lack of calories, man. You got to eat big to get big. The biggest guys are not the guys who necessarily train the most perfectly with the best form or, you know, have the most perfectly optimized routine in the world. A big barrier to entry of size is just fucking appetite. So don't forget it. Don't forget it. Eat your food, get your protein in, train hard, get a pump, take a picture of it so that you can see your progress over time. I mean, I couldn't name a better fucking scenario for a lifter. So the plan now is to go home, chill, and uh, well, I mean, that's pretty much it. I've got an exam on Monday I need to study for. I'll probably, it's probably in my best interest to do a little bit of that. But that's all I got, man. Solid arm day. Getting leaner by the, well, I mean, I guess technically, if I'm in a deficit, I'm getting leaner by the hour, because I'm kind of constantly oxidizing my body fat, but leaner by the days, more like. So, I'm excited for this to be over, and I can really start bulking up. But then once I start bulking, I'll get to the point where, okay, I'm excited to see what I've built, and then I want to cut down, so it's kind of a constant back and forth. That's uh, just a little insight into my uh, into my mentality there. But, yeah. So I've got legs tomorrow. Make sure I get a good night's rest. Uh, and I'm sure it will consist of... <sighs> some Smith Machine squats. And hamstring curls. And leg extensions. And maybe hack squats. I guess you'll have to see. But that is all I got. So I'll see you in the next.